This is a view from the Pew, first published in the parish magazine, the Red Marley magazine actually, in February 2007. So it's a few years ago now. However, I thought you'd be interested in uh, if I shared it with you again. Last month I wrote at the time, I revealed the unease I felt during a charismatic service when we were in America of such duration and energy that I was worried my visible failure to participate would be seen as evidence of a sin of such magnitude that the 3,000 strong congregation would somehow want to relieve me of its burden. This service was in the States, by the way. Now, I know that many people enjoy this style of service, but on that occasion at least, I was relieved when it all ended in an orderly fashion. I really was a wee bit fearful at one point. This month, I reflect on how the doctrines of some faiths can give purpose to the lives of adherents, but at the same time make life uneasy for others. Since the death of Jesus, there's been speculation about his second coming. From time to time, this speculation becomes widespread and gives rise to sects and doctrines designed to cope with the impending event. People often go up hills, for example. During the early 1800s, throughout Europe, and of course the USA, many sects sprang up who believed that the second coming of Jesus was imminent. So imminent, in fact, that they had calculated the dates. Some of these sects, however, recalculated their dates. And as the years went by, most of the sects, because Jesus didn't actually come back then, most of these sects disappeared, but a few remain to this day. During the early 1970s, one of these sects in England again calculated the second coming, and although they could not give a precise date, they were confident that the year was to be 1975. The newspapers did not give great prominence to this projection, and so most of us, I guess, got on with our lives unaware of any imminent change to the universal order. Now, my friend David was a mortgage advisor at that time who specialised in arranging loans for churches. And in 1973, this sect approached him for assistance in building one of their halls in Ripley, Derbyshire. A 20-year mortgage deal was amicably concluded. And during a relaxed chat, one of the church elders revealed that their prophetic message included the second coming of Jesus just two years ahead in 1975. Now, this alarmed David, who urgently inquired, but he said, it's a 20-year loan, and what if Jesus cancels all debts? Ethical and doctrinal discussions quickly ensued, but were very soon resolved. I later asked him, how did you get all that resolved so quickly? How did it happen? He grinned and succinctly said, we settled on ten. 